well known that you have a huge interest in the occult and one of the largest collections of books. But as I said, I certainly have been involved and I warn all of you, never, never, never. You will not only lose your mind, you lose your soul. Christopher Lee, the man whose name alone sends shivers down the spine. From the terrifying Count Dracula to the powerful Saruman and even the sinister Count Dooku, his presence dominated the screen for decades. But beyond the chilling performances that immortalized him as cinema's greatest villain, lies a far darker, more haunting reality. His life was not just one of Hollywood glamour, but of personal struggle, heartache, and an intense obsession with the occult that, today we explore the sad and disturbing truth about Christopher Lee. Christopher Lee's early life was deeply affected by his parents' divorce, a trauma that left lasting emotional scars. Born in 1922 to a privileged family, his father, Jeffrey Lee, was a decorated soldier who had served in World War I, while his mother, Estelle Marie Carandini, hailed from Italian nobility. Despite these distinguished backgrounds, the marriage was fraught with conflict. When Lee was just four years old, his parents separated. His father, whom Lee later described as more of a legend than a man I truly knew, left the family for good. This sudden abandonment shaped much of his childhood and beyond. In an interview later in life, Lee confessed how this fractured family dynamic created feelings of deep insecurity, saying, My father was a soldier. He fought in wars. He led men, but he never stayed to lead his own son. The separation not only deprived him of a paternal figure, but it also forced Lee to move frequently with his mother and sister. First, they relocated to Switzerland, where Lee was placed in a series of boarding schools. While the structured environment may have provided discipline, it left little emotional support for a young boy grappling with feelings of abandonment. Lee's return to England marked another chapter of emotional dislocation. His mother remarried Harcourt Rose, a wealthy banker, and while the family's financial situation improved, the emotional void persisted. Lee never formed a close bond with his stepfather, who provided for the family but did little to alleviate the loneliness Lee felt without his biological father. Reflecting on his stepfather's influence, Lee later commented, He was a figurehead more than a father, a symbol of stability but not one I could connect with. The instability of his home life made Lee feel like an outsider, even among his peers at school. This sense of alienation followed him throughout his youth. Lee recalled feeling disconnected, like a visitor in my own life. He struggled to fit in and often rebelled against authority, seeking validation in other ways. His escape came in the form of books, art, and eventually acting, where he could channel the feelings of isolation and anger into his performances. As Lee matured, it became clear that these early struggles heavily influenced his career choices. His emotional turmoil drove him toward dark, complex characters who mirrored the sense of internal conflict and abandonment he experienced as a child. He gravitated toward roles that explored themes of power, death, and isolation. Characters like Count Dracula, who, much like Lee, was doomed to an existence shaped by loneliness and loss. Lee himself admitted that these early emotional wounds played a role in shaping his darker performances. In one interview, he said, You draw from the pain you know, and for me, it was always there, beneath the surface. His experience of growing up without a consistent father figure, of feeling abandoned and displaced, became the fuel for the brooding intensity he brought to his most iconic roles. These emotional struggles weren't just a backdrop to his life, they were the driving force behind the roles that would come to define him as one of cinema's greatest villains. Christopher Lee's life took a dramatic turn when he enlisted in the Royal Air Force during World War II. Although his acting career would later make him famous, his wartime service was shrouded in secrecy for many years, even from those closest to him. Lee became part of the Special Operations Executive, SOE, a unit known for its covert and often dangerous missions behind enemy lines. Known as the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, the SOE conducted espionage, sabotage, and reconnaissance missions in enemy territory. 
Lee later joked about this in interviews, quipping, I've seen many things, I've done many things, but I can't tell you what I've done, or I'd have to kill you. Despite his humor, the missions were deadly serious. Lee's experiences during the war were intense and traumatic. While much of what he did remains classified, it's known that he was involved in operations in North Africa and Italy, witnessing death and violence on an almost daily basis. His work required him to be in some of the most dangerous areas of conflict, where survival was never guaranteed. He often described being surrounded by violence and chaos, which would forever alter his perspective on life and death. In later years, when asked about his wartime service, Lee remained reluctant to share details, reflecting the immense psychological toll it took on him. He once said, I don't talk about it. What I saw, what I did, it stays with me. One particular story highlights just how much the war shaped him. During the filming of The Lord of the Rings, director Peter Jackson was explaining to Lee how to act during a scene where Saruman is stabbed in the back. Jackson began describing the sound a man makes when stabbed, to which Lee interrupted, saying, Have you ever heard the sound a man makes when he's stabbed in the back? Because I have. It was a chilling reminder of the darkness Lee had experienced firsthand and how it had never left him. These years of witnessing death and destruction left a permanent mark on Lee. The psychological weight of his wartime experiences led to what he described as a deep understanding of mortality and darkness. He saw men killed, fought on the front lines, and was involved in the planning of high-risk operations. The emotional and mental scars from these years were profound. You can't go through a war like that and not be affected, Lee once said. You either harden or you break. I think I did a bit of both. His ability to harden may have helped him survive the war, but it also disconnected him emotionally in many ways. After the war ended, Lee admitted that he found it difficult to reintegrate into civilian life, struggling with a sense of alienation and distance from those who had not experienced the same horrors. The experiences he had during World War II shaped his post-war career in a profound way. His understanding of death, violence, and human suffering became a reservoir of emotional depth he could draw upon for his roles in film. The darkness he had seen firsthand found its way into his characters, particularly the villains he would become famous for. Whether it was Dracula or Saruman, Lee was able to infuse his performances with an authentic sense of menace and malevolence that few actors could match. It wasn't just acting, it was lived experience. In fact, Lee would later reflect that his time in the war gave him an edge as an actor, stating, The only reason I can bring that kind of darkness to my roles is because I've been there, I've seen it. In addition to his deepened understanding of mortality, the war also sparked a fascination in Lee with the occult and esoteric knowledge. Having faced the real horrors of war, he became intrigued by the myths and dark forces that seemed to mirror human brutality. His interest in the occult wasn't superficial. It was informed by the realities of death and destruction he had witnessed firsthand. It's no coincidence that many of Lee's most memorable roles dealt with supernatural themes, dark magic, and otherworldly forces. He found these themes compelling, not just as a form of escapism, but as a way to explore the darker sides of human nature that he had come to know all too well. After the war, Lee gravitated toward roles that explored the macabre, the supernatural, and the power struggles between good and evil. His portrayal of Count Dracula in the Hammer horror films, for example, drew upon his wartime experiences of violence and fear, allowing him to bring a sense of real danger and menace to the role. Similarly, his performances in The Wicker Man and The Devil Rides Out dealt with themes of occult power and dark rituals, tapping into his wartime fascination with death and the unknown. The trauma of war stayed with Lee throughout his life, affecting not only his personal outlook, but also the characters he chose to portray. He never fully revealed the extent of his wartime experiences, preferring to keep that part of his life private. However, the emotional and psychological toll it took on him was evident in the way he approached his craft. Lee was not just playing villains. 
he was channeling the very real darkness he had encountered on the battlefield. As he once said, when you've seen the true face of evil, it never leaves you, it changes you, and it becomes a part of you. Christopher Lee's portrayal of Count Dracula in the Hammer horror films made him an international icon, but it also became a curse that would haunt his career for decades. His first appearance as Dracula in Horror of Dracula, 1958, was a monumental success. Lee brought a menacing yet charismatic energy to the character, redefining the vampire archetype for a new generation. However, this role also cemented him in the public's mind as a horror star, a label he would spend much of his career battling against. Despite his success, Lee grew increasingly frustrated with being typecast. I didn't want to play Dracula again, Lee said in an interview, but it was the only work I was offered. I felt like I was trapped. Lee's frustration with being typecast stemmed from the fact that he was an actor of considerable range, but the roles he was offered rarely gave him the opportunity to showcase his full talents. After the success of Horror of Dracula, he was repeatedly cast as dark, villainous figures in horror films. He portrayed Dracula multiple times for Hammer, along with roles like Frankenstein's Monster and The Mummy, all of which pigeonholed him as a horror star. Even as the roles kept coming, Lee felt his potential was being wasted. I wanted to do more than horror, he once lamented. I could have been playing anything, but they kept offering me the same characters. The repetitive nature of these roles began to wear on him. By the late 1960s, Lee had grown disillusioned with the Hammer films and the horror genre that had made him famous. He often accepted roles reluctantly, primarily out of loyalty to the studio that had given him his big break, but his enthusiasm was fading. In several interviews, Lee expressed regret about how these roles had limited his opportunities. People don't understand how frustrating it is to be known for just one thing when you know you can do so much more. The price of fame for Lee was not just the limitation of his career, but also the lack of recognition for his full range of abilities. While audiences adored him as Dracula and other iconic villains, few knew about his talents beyond horror. He was multilingual, a trained opera singer, and had a background in Shakespearean theater. Yet these skills went largely unnoticed as he continued to be typecast in the same kinds of roles. It's difficult when the world sees you one way, Lee once said. You become a prisoner of your own success. It wasn't until much later in his life with roles like Saruman in The Lord of the Rings and Count Dooku in Star Wars that Lee finally began to receive the recognition he had long sought. These roles allowed him to break free from the confines of horror and showcase his acting range on a much larger stage. Lee himself acknowledged this, stating, I waited years for roles like these. I knew I had it in me, but it took far too long for others to see it. The frustration of being typecast, however, led Lee to explore darker, more nuanced characters, often with connections to the occult. His roles in films like The Wicker Man and The Devil Rides Out gave him the opportunity to delve into themes of ritual, dark magic, and the supernatural in ways that went beyond the simplicity of Hammer's Dracula. These roles allowed him to channel his personal fascination with death, power, and the unknown, all of which had been shaped by his earlier life experiences and wartime service. In many ways, being trapped in the horror genre pushed Lee to embrace the very thing that initially frustrated him. The characters he played were no longer just villains. They were complex, often tormented figures who reflected the darker aspects of human nature. As Lee himself put it, I came to realize that the characters I played, even the most villainous ones, had something real behind them. That's what I tried to bring to all my roles, the darkness that we all carry within us. Christopher Lee's fascination with the occult was profound, but it was rooted in his professional work rather than personal belief. Over the years, Lee amassed an extensive collection of occult books, including texts on witchcraft, necromancy, and other esoteric subjects. This collection, though impressive, was not an indication of personal involvement in occult practices, but rather a resource for his acting career. Lee's interest was driven by a desire to portray 
portray his roles with authenticity and depth rather than a genuine inclination towards the supernatural. In an interview, he clarified, My interest in the occult was purely for my work. I've never practiced any of these rituals myself. Lee's extensive research into occult themes was instrumental in his portrayal of several iconic characters. For his role as Count Dracula, Lee drew on historical and mythical sources to create a portrayal that was both menacing and richly textured. His dedication to accuracy extended to his role as Lord Summerisel in The Wicker Man, where he played a pagan leader who presides over a community steeped in ancient rituals. Lee's portrayal was informed by his deep understanding of occult practices, allowing him to bring a chilling realism to the character. Similarly, in The Devil rides out, where he played Nicholas, Duke of Richelieu, Lee's knowledge of black magic and dark rituals helped him deliver a performance that was both authentic and terrifying. As he put it, the more you understand about the subjects you're portraying, the more convincing your performance will be. Lee's fascination with the occult also reflected his broader interest in historical dark forces and rituals. He studied various texts on witchcraft and necromancy, not out of personal belief, but to enrich his acting roles. His portrayal of these figures often drew on his academic knowledge rather than personal conviction. What fascinated me was the history and the myths, not the actual practice, he explained. I was always more interested in how these beliefs influenced people and their actions, rather than in practicing them myself. Despite his extensive research and portrayal of occult themes, Lee was cautious about the real-world implications of such practices. He often used interviews to warn audiences against dabbling in occult rituals or attempting to emulate the dark practices depicted in films. Lee was firm in his stance that the allure of the occult should not lead to actual engagement with these dangerous ideas. There is nothing glamorous about the real occult, he said. It's not something to be taken lightly. My portrayals were fiction, not invitations to explore dark practices. Lee's warnings emphasized the difference between his professional interest and personal beliefs. He recognized the potential dangers of misinterpreting fictional portrayals as endorsements of real-life practices. People need to understand that what they see on screen is just that, fiction, he cautioned. The reality is far more sinister and should be approached with caution. Overall, Christopher Lee's deep engagement with occult themes was a professional endeavor aimed at enhancing his performances and bringing authenticity to his roles. While he used his knowledge to portray some of cinema's most terrifying characters, he remained adamant about the dangers of real occult practices and cautioned against them. His approach to the occult was a blend of professional curiosity and personal caution, reflecting a complex relationship with the dark themes that fascinated him and influenced his acting career. Christopher Lee's life, marked by remarkable achievements and public acclaim, was also shaped by profound personal losses and heartbreak. One of the most significant and deeply felt losses was the death of his close friend and frequent co-star, Peter Cushing. Lee and Cushing shared a bond that extended beyond their professional collaborations. They appeared together in numerous films, including classics like Horror of Dracula and The Mummy. Their friendship was built on mutual respect and a shared love for their craft. Lee once described Cushing as not just a friend, but a brother. Their camaraderie on and off the screen was evident, and their mutual admiration was well known among their peers. Cushing's death in 1994 was a devastating blow to Lee. Despite his typically strong and stoic exterior, Lee was deeply affected by the loss. He spoke openly about his grief, revealing how Cushing's passing left a void that was difficult to fill. Peter was one of the few people who truly understood me, Lee said in an interview. Losing him was like losing a part of myself. Lee's vulnerability in the face of such personal loss highlighted the emotional depth beneath his formidable public persona. The sadness and sense of loss he felt were profound and the impact of Cushing's death lingered with him for years. Another poignant chapter in Lee's life involved romantic heartache. In the early 1950s, 
Lee became engaged to a Swedish woman whom he deeply loved. However, her parents disapproved of the match due to Lee's lack of financial stability at the time. They felt that Lee, an aspiring actor struggling to make ends meet, was not a suitable match for their daughter. This rejection was a crushing blow to Lee, who had envisioned a future with her. The emotional toll of this romantic setback was significant, leaving him with a lingering sense of loss and disappointment. In later years, Lee reflected on this experience with a sense of melancholy, acknowledging that it had a lasting impact on his emotional well-being. It was a heartache that stayed with me, he admitted. The pain of losing someone you love, especially when you feel it was due to circumstances beyond your control, is hard to shake off. In his later years, Christopher Lee faced a series of health struggles that contrasted sharply with the commanding presence he was known for throughout his career. Despite his vigorous and dynamic persona on screen, Lee's physical health began to decline. He suffered from chronic back pain, a condition that plagued him for years and significantly impacted his mobility. The physical discomfort and limitations were a stark reminder of the inevitable toll of aging on even the most formidable individuals. Lee's health issues were compounded by heart problems that emerged as he grew older. These conditions forced him to rely on others for support, a situation that was difficult for someone who had always been perceived as strong and independent. His struggle with declining health was a sobering contrast to the powerful and imposing figures he portrayed on screen. Despite his efforts to remain active and engaged in his career, the physical challenges he faced were undeniable. It's hard to come to terms with the fact that your body no longer does what it used to, he once said, reflecting on his struggles. It's a reality that all of us face eventually. Despite these health challenges, Lee experienced a bittersweet resurgence in his career later in life. His roles in The Lord of the Rings and Star Wars introduced him to a new generation of fans and brought him widespread recognition for his talents. His portrayals of Saruman and Count Dooku were celebrated and appreciated highlighting his enduring skill and charisma as an actor. However, this resurgence in fame came at a time when his health was waning. The recognition he received was a testament to his enduring talent, but it was tinged with the sorrow of knowing that his physical capabilities were no longer what they once were. Lee's final years were marked by a mixture of professional success and personal struggle. While he celebrated the acclaim of his later roles, the reality of his declining health served as a poignant reminder of the challenges of aging. His legacy as an actor was firmly established, but the personal and physical struggles he faced in his later years were a testament to the complexities of his life beyond the screen. Despite these struggles, Lee remained a figure of admiration and respect, leaving behind a legacy of remarkable performances and a life marked by both triumph and hardship.